Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. A while back I did a video analyzing Pacey Witter from Dawson's Creek, which was very well received with over 500 views. So I decided I wanted to do another thoughts analysis for another Joshua Jackson character because I've noticed a pattern with a lot of the characters Josh Jackson plays on screen. Sarcastic, smart-witted young men with daddy issues. Oh! Ah! Walter, why is there an ear in the omelet? It was an experiment. It was a protein-rich incubator. It was growing. It was growing. <laughs> That's perfect. No, it's not perfect. You just ruined it. And you could have died had you eaten it. Hello. Really? You know, hey. maybe in the future you could do me a favor and just put up a sign warning me not to confuse your toxic yeah, playthings okay. with breakfast. Maybe you should get your own breakfast and not poach oh. mine. That is hardly the point. Remember yesterday when I nearly washed my face in a sink full of acid? Or three days ago, you hooked Gene up to the solar panels and I nearly electrocuted myself. This is a lab. You're the one we should be careful. I trust you look both ways when you cross the street. Yeah, but the difference being that if I don't, I'm the only one who gets flattened. You, Walter, you live in a society with other people. This time, I want to examine Charlie Conway from The Mighty Ducks, because the character took quite an unexpected turn that many fans of the franchise didn't see coming. When we first meet Charlie, we meet an only child who is raised by his single mother, and he has something very significant missing from his life a father. His whole life, he never had someone to call dad. And he says in the first movie that when his mother meets a new boyfriend, the boyfriends like her, but the moment they learn Casey Conway is a single mom, they leave and don't even take the chance to get to know Charlie. However, the significant change in his life is Gordon Bombay. Bombay makes it clear from the start that as much as he likes Casey, he truly wants to be there for Charlie too, and believes that her son should come first. And what I find most admirable about Gordon and Casey is how, even though they didn't work out long term, neither of them blamed Charlie for their splitting up. And Gordon continued coming around for Charlie and being there for him. Gordon even tells Charlie in D3, And there you were. Charlie and the Ducks. And as hard as I fought it, There you were. You gave me a life, Charlie. And I want to say thank you. Now, this is important to bear in mind. In two of the movies, Charlie is a relatively optimistic, starry-eyed young boy who is absolutely in love with Bombay and clearly sees Gordon as a father. We see that Charlie has the biggest heart always puts his teammates before himself, and takes care of his mother. Three significant signs that Casey raised him to have a heart of gold and to be loyal and respectful. In the second movie, he willingly gives up his spot on the team so that both Russ and Adam have a shot at playing in the finals at the Junior Goodwill Games because he knows the team will benefit more from Russ's knuckle puck and Adam's shot since Adam is is the only one on the team that can get his shot past Julie the cat. He even says he'd make a better coach than he does a player. But by the time we reach D3, we see a huge shift in Charlie's personality that I can imagine confused a lot of people, but doesn't surprise me at all. In D3, we see Charlie a little more jaded and bitter, and he's no longer the starry-eyed optimist we knew from the first two movies. Granted, he's 14 going on 15. We hear his voice cracking and see hints of acne, which could only mean one thing. He's going through puberty, and it's also safe to assume that the supposed stepfather whom Casey got married to before D2 had left, and the cherry on top, Bombay pulls Charlie aside and informs him that he got offered a job with the Junior Goodwill Games Committee to manage their junior hockey program worldwide, which means Bombay won't be Charlie's coach anymore, 
because Charlie and his friends are going to Eden Hall Academy on scholarship. These three major things led to Charlie growing to be very angry, jaded, and sarcastic. And over the course of the past few years, he'd grown comfortable in his role as a forward scorer and had even been named the captain of the Ducks by Bombay, who'd given him that title. So when Charlie first meets coach Ted O'Ryan, he instantly takes a dislike to O'Ryan, who not only dismisses everything he and the Ducks are accustomed to, but also takes away Charlie's C. And one of the earlier drafts of the script claims Orion was going to give the captain position to Dwayne Robertson. I mean, really? Dwayne, the cowboy? Dwayne can't lead a team, much less comprehend anything that's pure common sense, because he's so dense. What made Orion think that Dwayne would be a good captain? And I guess the scriptwriters realized that mistake because luckily that didn't happen in the final cut of the movie. Thank you, God. They say that the most influential parent in any child's life is a parent who's of the same sex as them. So, you know, for Charlie to grow up without a father, gain a stepdad who ultimately leaves, have the man he's always loved like a father for four years, tell him he won't be coaching him anymore, and to top it all off, have to go to a preppy high school full of stuck-up, cake-eating, spoiled brats from old money who get a kick out of harassing him and his friends and go out of their way to make sure Charlie and the Ducks know they'll never belong, you're basically putting the kid in a pressure cooker and sending him past his boiling point. I can only imagine he was probably thinking, is there something wrong with me? Why am I not good enough? Why do so many men leave me and my mother? Do I not deserve to have a dad? For years, Charlie built all of his self-worth around being the captain of the docks, so that role being taken away from him doesn't help either, and he clashes with Orion, who knows that Charlie is talent and leadership capability, but wants to see him work hard to earn it. But Orion taking away the C leads to Charlie almost inadvertently abandoning his chosen family, the Ducks, because he feels abandoned by Bombay. He lashes out at Adam and accuses him of going along with the varsity team's bullying after the varsity team leaves them during a sham of a dinner party to make them pay a check that's over $800. He even tells Fulton, go, I don't need you. After Fulton confesses to him that he's not sure whether he wants to play hockey for the rest of his life, Fulton and Adam were the two that he took into his chosen family and really made them feel part of the team, especially since Fulton had been an outcast before he joined the Ducks and, you know, seemingly had nobody. So for Charlie to tell Fulton, I don't need you, he's repeating the vicious cycle of abandonment that had been done to him, and he's in a way turning into his biological father who abandoned him. And this isn't entirely uncommon for children who feel abandoned by family members, especially if it happens to them again and again and again. And this is something called projection. He's projecting his feelings of loneliness and neglect onto others as he grows more and more miserable. His abandonment issue, combined with his changing hormones, turn him into what he's become in D3. And it isn't until he and Bombay have that heart-to-heart -heart in the hallway that he realizes there's more than enough room for both Bombay and Orion in his life. And by the end of D3, we see him slowly accepting Orion as a very 
different kind of father figure. And I can only imagine what possibly went through Charlie's mind 20 odd years later when Bombay went off the grid. We know from the Mighty Ducks Game Changers TV show that Bombay dropped off the face of the earth after he lost a coaching position at St. Paul State University and as a result cut the original Ducks out of his life, particularly after seeing that the modern day Ducks care only about winning. And while Charlie didn't appear in Game Changers due to Joshua Jackson having a scheduling conflict with filming Dr. Death, we do hear from the Ducks, who did return for the reunion episode, that Charlie has a lot of anger and bitterness toward Bombay due to Bombay cutting off communication. They tell Bombay that Charlie told them he feels Gordon doesn't care about them because Bombay broke all of the promises he made to Charlie at the end of D3. And as much as I hate that detail about the series, it does make some sense even though it ultimately betrays any and all character development that Bombay had gone in for three movies. Because here is why. Bombay possibly fell off the wagon again because we know from his past that, you know, he's prone to having a lot of issues with self-worth due to the death of his own father, which ultimately led to him having issues with alcoholism. His loss of that coaching job more than likely led to him abusing alcohol again, and it was probably just easier for him to try running away rather than leaning on Charlie and the Ducks because, you know, he didn't want them to feel burdened by his problems. But I'm sure many of the fans would have wanted Charlie and Bombay to have a moment of reconciliation where Bombay promises that now that he's coaching the Don't Bothers, he's back and here to stay for good and that Evan, Logan, Kubler, Maya, Lauren, and the others helped him heal and go back on the road toward being the person he once was, which in turn means he'll start coming back around for his original docs. Luckily, there's plenty of fan fiction out there that gives us exactly what we want, so I'll take it, but I do hope that Emilio Estevez and Stephen Brill can come to some agreement at some point and produce a D4 movie where Josh Jackson comes back as Charlie so we can finally see Charlie and Bombay interact again. And never say never. Thank you for watching. If you're brand new, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for all notifications. Also be sure to leave a like and comment down below to let me know your thoughts and opinions. And of course, all links to my social media will be linked in the description. God bless, happy viewing, and have a nice day everyone.